to drive cycle energy calculations, uh, moving from you know physically doing the test now calculating torque and speed. Uh, what a lot of us are after is is energy. So, um, drive cycles are a really popular way to understand the use of energy in a vehicle. Um, you know what what a drive cycle is is it's one of these EPA dictated um, speed curves over time that really dictate the, the torque of the machine. So, you know, for example, the US 06 has a couple of hard accelerations, a long period of um, high speed operation, and then kind of this stop start behavior. We're really looking at what's the energy usage under different scenarios. Now, these are typically run on a dyno or a chassis dyno or EPA fuel estimation um, or range determination. But these are also the type of profiles we're looking at in vehicles. So I think they're a nice thing to introduce. Um, taking that to the in vehicle, one of the main things we're after is energy used during a drive cycle. And again, these things can be performed on a dyno with just a component, on a chassis dyno with a full vehicle, or actually in the vehicle running through, through a series of um, tests. Now, what I have displayed on the screen is, is an example of a drive cycle, again, taken on a, a small vehicle, where we're looking at the RMS voltage and current, and we're looking at those in a live screen, and we can see, you know, when our torque is high because our current is in rushing, we can see our voltage indicating our speed. One of the interesting things I have here is a cycle check and the frequency of the machine. So we can actually monitor what the frequency of the machine is. We can interpolate speed from that. We can look at the power. We can see our, our positive power, you know, in these areas. And then we're slowing down. We can see regen in these scenarios. And we can really dynamically look at those power flows. But what we're getting after is energy. And in one of these tests where we have four different sections, so there's kind of four different distinct um, energy use areas, we can start to look at you know, where are the energy intensive areas? What does the accumulation of energy usage over time look like? And the important thing here is this really does require dynamic power. And because this cycle check, this frequency is being pulled directly from our cycle detector, we can see that that whole time, we're very accurately tracking that power, very accurately tracking that energy usage. And we got this nice smooth curve. And this gives us a lot of confidence that in these dynamic scenarios, very accurately tracking our energy usage. Um, so really powerful stuff in this in this regard. And what we see from a lot of people is they want to break these, you know, these drive cycles into different sections. So, you know, we've got this first section here, the second section, this third section. They want to analyze these individually, either to understand how their competitors do things, to compare supplier parts for efficiency, or largely to calibrate and tune the system. So we can take one, now this is only a one minute test, but for example, it was longer or shorter. We, we could also segregate these segments into different periods. So um, in our eDrive system, because we're recording all the data and we have a, a wide variety of automation tools, we can actually take triggers. So driver throws a trigger at the beginning, throws a trigger at the end. We can use that in the post process to run automation on um, different segments of data. We could also do it on values. You know, every time speed hits zero, I want to start a new segment, something like that. Um, so we could take along one of those segments. So this is um, section one from the previous test. We can look at its frequency throughout. We can look at its power. We can analyze its region. And we can look at the energy usage per section. And we can start to think, how can I improve this system? How can I tune my inverter? And what we see is between my two little cursors here, um, you know, I've got a regeneration of 173 joules on a total usage of, of 1,500 joules. Um, pretty small vehicle, so, so not a ton of energy being used. But we can really use these insights and some of these tools that like automation, where we're nothing magic here. We're just snipping a segment and giving you this output energy or, or other advanced calculations. We can start to understand how does regen work. How can we increase the range of our system? Can we make the regen more aggressive? If you had accelerometers in there, you could say, well, making regen more aggressive is, is really hurting the user experience. Start to get this whole um, picture of what's happening. And then section two, again, my, my pen's biting me here. Um, 
you know, section two's got a different profile and we could optimize that profile. Um, yeah, we can see here that actually this is when the scooter is kicked. So you have this little inrush energy and, and this instantaneous speed. Um, section three, nothing, nothing too interesting happening, but again, I think you get the point. And then section four, uh, my favorite section, because this is where uh, we have a little airborne wheel event and you can see that this frequency spikes and this here is just an awesome indicator of our cycle detector working extremely well, even in a very strange situation where you almost instantaneously speed up the machine, you remove all the torque and you actually go into a regenerative mode because um, of the inertia of the wheel. You know, the current goes to zero. We still track that cycle. We recover tracking that cycle. And this gives me a ton of confidence that all these calculations were run correctly. So that, that's really, really cool to look at. Um, especially if you know the test and you have this correlated back to a video. So just again, really powerful stuff from having raw data, from having a dynamic power measurement tool, um, a really good indicator of what's happening and having confidence that your test is correct.